Today we're having a look at a script which can quickly create a framing plan based on a floor outline. And it has several options that you can change the direction and the spacing of the beams. And you can see how quick it is by me selecting this other floor plate there. And I'll switch the direction on this as well. You can also do it through a web page if you prefer rather than using Grasshopper. And you can see you have similar options to the script in terms of controlling the output. Okay, so we're just going to start off with a simple rectangular outline of a building as a floor plate, and I'm just going to frame that out by adding it to the script. So now it's added framing in the Y direction with the secondaries in the Y direction, and it's worked out that that span is short enough that it doesn't need to break that up. In, in the Y direction, but in the X direction it's a bit too long, so it's split into half. Now I can flip the framing in the other direction. And now because it's split it up, obviously the secondaries are running into this primary beam there. So you've got primary around the border and a primary at gridline B. Now I can change the maximum span so say I think that's too, a bit too long, I just adjust that down and now it's split it into three bays of secondary framing. Okay, so that's a pretty simple example. So if I go into a slightly more complex scenario, you can see here that it's split it up into three again, but this time it's trying to keep a fairly consistent span between the two bays even though there will be a couple that are a bit longer by splitting it roughly in half along that top edge um, again I can flip that I can also change the spacing so if I make that a closer spacing for secondary themes that's pretty easy and it's put columns at each corner. So it's all these beams are simply supported. Okay, so moving up a bit more complex again. You can see what it's tried to do there. So again, it's trying to use the outside perimeter as much as possible. It's not using every single perimeter wall because otherwise if you had a lot of small spacing external walls you'll end up with hundreds of grids so the grids are roughly at now it's tried to optimize them to be at the minimum spacing that's defined by the user of the script so everything's still simply supported though that's a simply supported beam on the edge that's a simply supported all the secondaries are obviously that's broken up there I'll show that in a minute so that's another simply supported there um, again I can flip it I can change I can even make it a bit a really uh, huge spacing for secondaries so I could you can use this for timber framing for composite steel um, you know two and a half meter spacing uh, internally so that could be a composite deck system I'm using uh, sort of typical timber spans in this case so finally I'll do this more complex shape you can see it's pretty quick and here unlike in the other scenarios let's put some internal columns because that span is too big and again it's tried to line it up with a wall that already exists on the perimeter 
So that's really good. So you don't want to evenly split this in half and then have it just slightly off that external wall. You want that all lined up perfectly. So that's that's a nice um, outcome there. Okay, so I'll put some design and 3D modeling behind this in a minute. But before I do that, I'll just quickly show how it deals with internal walls as well. So for this scenario, imagine these are the internal walls of the building. So if possible, you want to use the internal walls as load bearing walls. Um, and I'll show you how the script does that. So apply that now. It's pretty quick. It's split it up similar to the scenario above. However, in this case, we have the grid lining up with that internal wall in that direction on D. So if I simply drag this, you'll see that it doesn't always use it. It only uses it if it can roughly line it up with um, equal spacing. So here I've dragged it over. It said, no, that's too close to grid C. I want to have it roughly between C and E. So as I get closer, it'll try and snap to it. And it's snapped to it there. And it, it'll stay snapping to a certain extent. But if I get too far, it says, no, I'd prefer to have a decent span for this end bay than to snap to that wall. It just It's not very practical to use that internal wall um, and still have a decent framing system. Likewise with this one, it doesn't really make sense to use that because it's not broken up very well. But if I put it to there, it's going to snap to that. Whoops, I just dragged uh, the node instead of the beam. It'll snap to it if it can use it, <clears throat> if it makes sense. Otherwise it'll ignore it. So it's ignored this one, for example, because we only need two spans between those. So again, I can flip that and I could show a simpler, similar thing in the other direction. <clears throat> it's Although here it wants to use this external wall, so the internal wall isn't really used. It prefers to use the external wall there, which is more logical. All right, now I'm going to combine it with some design. So here you can see I'm using one of the scripts that we have to design all this timber. So now that I've framed it out, I can get the script to design it. And you can change your grade of timber, the type of floor loads and all that sort of stuff in as the user of the script. So it's, it's designed all this stuff. 240 by 45 f17 290 by 45 f17 at the edge depending on the span as you can see um, i'll also add in the columns um, you can see if i turn this to a framing plan I just maximize that. You pretty much got a framing plan there already. So you can see how quick it is. I've got a building outline from the architect and it's framed. Same thing here. It's done. So I can flip the direction if, if the architect prefers that the other way around done etc so you can really quickly get an idea and tell the architect how deep the beam's going to be um, from there you can start closing up the spans if sizes are too big etc etc so you can control all that just put some internal walls or change the spacing so for example again I'll change the spacing in the y direction so that'll split it up more um, from A to G. 
or in the other direction, we should get from 1 to 2 is now, uh, from 0 to 2 is now 0 to 4, and it's split it up into much smaller sections, so they're 140s instead of 240s now. And it also recognizes that there's more load on the perimeter. Uh, if you want to define that as a user, there's an input in the script. So that means uh, it takes into account that there's a wall load coming down um, from above, or there's a roof load coming down from above. So that can be defined by the user as well. And the last thing, which also shows the wall load, I'm going to do it on this multi-story structure. So again, it just simply set multiple curves. And it'll work through that. And there's your design. So let's put the columns coming down the building. It's designed all the timber. Again, these outer edges have more load on them. I might open up the spacing again to something that suits timber a little bit better. It's one direction and I'll open it up in the other direction. And it's done. So here you can see the calculations or also looking at this, as I said, this perimeter wall load, which in this case will be from a roof. And it's put a two number uh, section in there to keep the uh, depth down. So when it reaches a certain point, you can say, please do two number instead of one. And then you keep the depth down for the architect. And again, I can flip the direction. That's what it's like the other way around. Now, if you don't have Grasshopper or don't want to use Grasshopper, you can just simply do it at our website. If you go to our website and go to the Frame Crafter or the Resi Framer pages, the script is inside the page. So you can spin around this demo or you can just upload your own architectural file and it should interpret it. Um, again, I can change the direction of the framing. So X or Y, I can change the centers of the secondary framing. And obviously I can download that file in different formats. So two structural analysis formats or the Rhino model. You can also see that it used in the Resi Framer app. In the Resi Framer app, you don't have all the options. So the architect just wants a reasonable design without fiddling with it too much. So you can have the auto framer on or off and you can change the direction. Um, if I turn it off, for example, it uses the joists that the architect's drawn in and the directions that they prefer. It still sizes everything up for them. Um, but uh, they may have a preference. Otherwise, just use the auto framer. So you just need an architectural building um, it doesn't have any floor framing at all. It just it can just be a roof, a flat roof, or a pitched roof, uh, and walls. And it should. The aim of this script is that it just takes all that information, turns it into a analysis program um, format in the background, but just gives architects a simple way to draw a couple of boxes and get all their framing done. And then they can download that as a 3D model if they want. It's also doing the bracing check as I've explained before. 
So that's the scripts um, briefly explained. If you've got any comments or suggestions, let us know. You can get the Grasshopper script from our website or you can use it online as I've just explained. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.